Good afternoon, Scott Rutherford, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. It's Wednesday and uh, you know, pretty interesting day. You know, every day you enter the market, you never know exactly what's going to happen. You can only use your skill set, your process, your you know, toolbox of different tactics to use. You know, I came in today probably longer than I've been in a while thinking that we closed well yesterday into the higher end of the apex where we could good, you know, get some follow through. And in the morning call, I talked about, you know what? We're getting into uh, the pivot high resistance where you should probably be selling, not adding. Not knowing, you know, do we pause there? Do we come a little bit off there? Um, you know, what type of action you have. But whenever you have a move like you've had from last week on Friday, 1917-ish in the S&P to 1995 with the oscillator plus 60, which I explained in my note, you sell some. Some people came in flat were like, you know what? I'm going to short this area. And they had to short that area with you know, in the back of their head, maybe we could push up a little bit higher. But within the first 15 minutes of the day, you know, if you sold your longs or, you know, you, you waited for that 15-minute high or even five-minute high, you, you had something to trade against and you basically never had any pain. Uh, but, but the frustrating part was probably that if you thought today would be a methodical pullback, which I actually thought today would be more of a methodical pullback, not, you know, the, the type of action we saw today, um, you might have bought a few times on the way down and, and perhaps got stopped out. Anyway, you look at the chart of the SPX, you know, here was the range that we broke below. Um, this is when it got really tight. You know, I like to show it each time because uh, the clues that you did have um, to get out of the way or get short. And then this was the last recent range, right? Here was the low on that Monday of uh, 1867. Here was your high of uh, 1993, lower high, lower high, and this was yesterday. So I came in saying, you know what? I feel like we're gonna at least test the upper end of the range, test the, the 21 day moving average that um, we've been below since. So it makes some sense there. So that's why within the first five minutes, I was out of my spiders. Okay, and everyone in the virtual trade floor saw that. You know, I also got rid of my Facebook, got rid of my Citigroup, and got rid of my FireEye well below, you know, or well before they went, uh, you know, red. But anyway, um, you can see that on the virtual trade floor. That's one of our products. So here was the prior high, 1970. So as you enter the day, this is what you know. Okay, you have to know what you know, and this is what you know. Everything else is just a guess. Here is yesterday's high. Here is resistance. So basically, boom. Okay, we touched resistance. <laughs> the high of today was uh, 1988, actually a little bit below resistance of uh, 1993. If you shorted versus that, you had no pain. If you sold into that, great. If you waited to say, okay, let me wait until we, you know, uh, cross back below this because Red Dog's rule is if you trade above a prior high and you can't hold it and you're trading for momentum, you get out of the way. So if you got out of the way here, you saved yourself, you know, a, a lot of uh, more downside and maybe giving back anything you were up. And some guys, if you got short here, there are ways to, you know, to add. As far as this overall wedge, you know, wedge is somewhat still in intact, but in a healthier environment, you know, you you break out and go. You don't do a false distribution type breakout and now, you know, we'll get to see what happens down here. You know, sometimes this goes on for a while. You know, look how long this range went on before, you know, it wound up resolving. It looked like it was going to go up, then it looked like it was going to break, then went back to the up end, held higher, and then finally got tightened up before it broke. So here on the first, you know, portion of it, um, it looked as if it might break to the upside and push a little higher, but it failed. Okay, we trade real time. That's what happens. You know, so now we'll see what type of open we get tomorrow. All you know is for now, you have 1940 as yesterday's low, and then you have, uh, you know, a little bit of a bigger, res you know, support uh, area if, the, if this turns more into um, a range versus, uh, you know, uh, uh, the wedge, and that, that would be right in here. So you, we'll figure out what happens next. You know, most guys, momentum guys are probably short overnight, not long. I went out flat after being long last night. You know, recently you've had some good follow through from day and a half to day and a half. Remember Wednesday into Thursday? That was a nice take home long, opened up and failed, opened down. You could have covered uh, month, Tuesday, who knew what was going to happen, but you had at least um, upside into upside follow through. Now you had a failure. So the good book would say, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, 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 this little level should be a spot that, you know, should be, future should be, should be down tomorrow. There's a the huge travel range, so maybe if it were to open up 10 handles, I bet your sellers come in and try and trade it through today's low. If we open down, maybe some buyers try this, but then those are the lows. So, 
you know, the reason why, you know, you have a pattern of indecision here, which now looks like a very nasty bear flag with a, a failure into this wedge, is because, you know, uh, if you go to the weekly chart, you just had a, a decent breakdown in, um, you know, the, the, what's it called, the intermediate trend. Here is your intermediate trend that broke. Now you're going sideways, you know, trying to hold the prior October low and digesting what was a big down move. And some think that this could lead into a move back to here, maybe to here, maybe even to there. You know, could be. You know, if you go back to more of the, you know, that the macro trend, okay, which uh, was from 2009, that low comes in a little bit closer to here. So some think this could get tested. Some even think that the double top, you know, that, that a clear down here gets tested. These are all thoughts. As of right now, all you know is the active intermediate trend broke. We've been maneuvering this wedge, trying to make uh, money from day in and day out. And now um, you do have, um, you know, a pretty nasty candle for the day that we'll see what happens if it, you know, fills this void there. Okay, so let's go back to today. That's uh, the bigger. Oh, there you go. That's a break of that. So I'll go back to the daily. Um, you know, the question was what could have given you some clues that today would not hold? One of them being the bios. The bio was the first one to go red and fill its gap. Look at the bios now. Bios had you know two nice days. It also went into resistance. The old head and shoulders top spot. Remember we talked about that. I actually didn't even get there. No, it was what the bottom end of it was 357. What did it get to today? It went to 356.40. Okay, and if you were in the bios and you sold some strength, great. If you waited for it to break below a prior high, which was 352, you got out. <laughs> nine points higher than where it closed and now you have a pretty bad engulfing day so you'll see what happens tomorrow um, you know this should have gotten you out of um, your your IBB if you've been in it for the past few weeks if you bought it in the hole or if you were playing it from Friday into some type of follow through so this candle is pretty pretty ugly the Q's candle also pretty ugly you know Q's went red first um, or red you know red before the spiders and what did the Q's do the Q's got rejected at the 200 day. Didn't reclaim it, got rejected there. It also did an outside day. Hopefully, if you're in technology or in the Q's, you sell some strength or you sell when it breaks above or below a prior high, which was 105.17, versus selling the low of the morning, which is 103.59, a dollar 40. That's a lot. You know, it's a, to a percentage point or so in the in the Q's. So now I guess we'll see what happens here. Does it? hold into this or was this a distribution within the wedge that's going to lead to lower prices because overall what did the the cues just do you know as far as trading all the cues really did is retest this broken intermediate trend also that's when the trend broke um, here is your come back up retest power into resistance and now what we'll see what if was downside probing so you break it down you know, you, we broke out, we broke below the, the, the bottom end of the seven month range. If you got out of the way and got short, you made money into that capitulation low. If you were able to embrace volatility by that low and the reflex back up, you made some money. And then now we've been playing this range as this pattern's building while everyone's trying to figure out, you know, was that the low or, or not? You know, there's been lots of trades along the way. And, you know, at this point, hopefully you've, you've taken some of them and, and made some money in August and have a decent September so far. We shall see. As far as stocks, you know, today was Apple Day, and you know, everyone says, "Oh, it's so easy for them to to sell the event," and they sold the event. A lot of nice new products, great ecosystem. I love their products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but they love to sell the event for Apple, and as of right now, Apple is still pretty much, you know, broken this um, this one trend. And uh, since the low, okay, it's been acting pretty well, and now. You know, you have a somewhat ugly candle where it failed into resistance. Failed to the 21 day. A lot of these stocks are all failed at the 21 day. They're all below that. Instead of being above it, like when we like to be long them, they're below it and people are selling them to that. Now the question is, will it get below this wedge type area and, you know, lead the market down or lead the market back into some retracement zones? Here is some support right there. This is, uh, you know, 107.36 and then this is 105. As of right now, if you were long Apple into today, you know, once it went above a prior high, which was 112.56, and went back below it, you get out of the way. You sell it. If you were looking for a short entry and you were waiting nice and calm, and you saw this first particular move when the, you know, when the, when the event started, pushed above and failed, you could have shorted with this as your 
stop and you got paid pretty handsomely. So again, you want to sell when it gets back below the prior high, not when it breaks the prior low. Look how much money you gave back by sitting there and waiting. So that's Apple. Um, now what did Google do today? Google, I bet you, has a big topping tail now. Let's see if it held up. Eh, I wouldn't call it a topping tail, but again, in healthier environments, you break out of a wedge and you hold it. You don't you know, give it all back. That's called distribution. What did Amazon do? Amazon also broke above uh, support, I was sorry, resistance, and, and couldn't hold it. So now we'll see if it comes back in. Nice two-day move, a little follow-through in this too. If you sold some strength, we talked about this level also in the morning note, saying it could be very tough. So that's why you sell strength, not knowing what could happen next, just to book some and then figure it out. At this point, still best in breed, but it just came from a lower levels. Netflix, you know, I talked about it on my morning note. I said, you know, I don't think it's going to be so easy to sell it today that if they can't sell it and bring it lower, there's a lot of uncommitted shorts and you'll probably get a nice move. And that's pretty much where I made my active money. It was in Netflix today. Netflix, after being battered and bruised, finally gave you, you know, an update. Doesn't mean the downside's over. Just means that if you had a calculated plan, you made money. You go to the five-minute chart. You could see it a little bit better. Um, go to the five-minute chart. It's five-day or is that five-minute? Five-minute. You'll see right here. They, you know, you had the, the gap up. They tried to sell it down and they couldn't. And then boom, once it closed above, you know, went above that, that first open candle, that range candle, the first 15 minutes, you had a nice trade. That's where I made my money. Above 97, went straight to 102 before pretty much wedging again. Uh, came in, retested, and then trickled lower with the market. But this was a nice calculated trade. I just figured they wouldn't be able to do the same thing they did the prior day where it opened up, closed the gap, and you know, went another $4 lower. So this time, what was different? Opened up. Couldn't really close the gap, couldn't get pressured, and the trade was different. So that's how you could judge whether or not the trade is different. It was very oversold. You had the event. A lot of people were also saying that Apple was going to steal their, their lunch with you know, some kind of streaming service, and it didn't happen. So maybe even you know, maybe Netflix is a little bit of a take-home long uh, overnight, but um, that's only if you, if you really want to. At this point, you know, it closed well considering what the market did, but... Um, you know, it, again, it's still somewhat of a broken name, but it did act better than the overall tape today. So, um, you, you know, we'll see what happens. But overall, overall nice tactical cash flow. You know, the last few times, yesterday, the tactical cash flow was up three to down four, selling it. Then today, going back to the well one too many times, you got hurt. But if you actually bought it, there was a great active cash flow, and now you can go home flat, and we can figure it out tomorrow. Um, it's also along Citigroup, sold some strength, and then, again, you know, this is not the type of day you, you want to hold. Um, it couldn't even get up to uh, the prior resistance. So that shows relative weakness versus you look at the spiders, for instance. It went up to the prior resistance, didn't it? Okay. Citigroup made it to there. You look at um, the IBBs. It actually went through. Or, I don't know, just up to prior resistance before failing. So you look at the, first we'll look at the XLFs. Um, didn't quite make it there. Look, you know, if it... That's there. It's, that's actually a decent percentage in the XLF. So, so City was a good sell the, sell the strength and then get out of it when it went negative. And uh, it did go negative. And this looks pretty ugly now. You look at Goldman. What did you do? Goldman actually had a little bit of more of a push, but again, pushed through a level and couldn't hold it. You get out of the way. Now you have a pretty ugly candle. Again, just like everything else. Um, XLE you know, opened up when red pretty early, it too, um, trying to prove that this was a, a decent move off the lows here. You know, here was a little bit of a V move, and then it's been holding sideways, and this failed, failed into the 21 day. It's been failing at the 21 day this entire time. That hasn't changed. Okay, got above the 8 day. That's a, a, a short-term active signal, but for something to be real and change, you have to get above another obstacle, which it failed at. Closing the lows. I would not be long this. I can get downside follow-through. Remember the TLTs I gave you an outside day um, when the market had its? That was right here, okay, which we talked about. Boom. That was your sell signal in the TLTs. Well, today, my morning call, I talked about maybe, you know, finding an outside day or a red dog reversal in the TLTs. Actually, I think it was in the note. And then that's what happened today. Bookends. Sell here <laughs> when it opened up and failed and got back below this, which was uh, 126.74. And then 
Here's your first outside day when open lower came back above this um, uh, 120.71, and that could have been a small either cover or buy signal. So you can maneuver these. So here we are. Um, it is a Wednesday. You've had some nice day and a half action. The question is, today's um, you know, rejection into resistance, closing on the lows, does that lead to more weakness tomorrow? It usually does. Most guys that trade at a Schoenfeld or Momentum guys are probably all in short, or, or at least short, um, versus being long, because with a day like today, engulfing, you take a step back um, or, and figure it out. You could be neutral, meaning flat, and wait to see what happens if we open up down tomorrow into that 192 area, or you could say, I was waiting for this retest of 1990 in the SPX. It failed. I'm going short. I think we're testing those lows of 1860. I'm short today, and I'm not covering until we get there. Could happen. <laughs> so, you know, it all depends on, on how you want to live. For me, I've been picking spots well. You know, I was, you know, thinking about going home short. I didn't, but, you know, I've had a you know, nice decent run and, you know, had a good trade yesterday. I worked my way into long, sold strength, and now uh, I'll figure it out. And um, we'll see what happens, you know, next. Facebook held in actually the, ma the majority of the day, and now all of a sudden a topping tail. So even the best stocks, you know, can't succumb to the pressure. You know, this came into the resistance area, tailed, and now, you know, there could be a little bit more downside tomorrow. It was tight and uh, had some follow-through. It was worth taking home long. You know, you got your push like everything else, so you're a little bit higher than everything else. And now today, if you're active, I bet you some people probably went home short this because of the topping tail into resistance because look where it came from. And uh, we shall see. Keep taking trades. Cash is a position. We're in between time frames. The active intermediate time frame is broken. The macro is still intact. We're getting at least these big swings where there is movement. You can make money in these ranges. <laughs> Instead of the, the first seven months where you had a 10 to 20 handle range, we're now getting 40 to 50 handle ranges where you could dissect on a 3 and 15 minute bar your strategy on whether you want to add to shorts, add to longs, or, or take some things home for follow through or not. So lots of ways to... to Skin a bull or a bear, <laughs> uh, you know, figure out which one is, is best for you and then continue to work on it and hopefully you're making progress. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.